Hello, this is Chris Menard. I have a great Excel training video for you today. Here's the issue we have. If you look, notice in column A, I have a list of names followed by email addresses. And I only have six, but assume that I either have 60 or 600 or even 6,000. And the objective of the day is to take, pull out just the emails from column A and then to put a comma between them so I can upload them to our LMS or into another system. And the LMS or the other system requires the emails to have a comma after them. So I'm going to show you three ways to do it. And it's actually going to be two steps. So the first step is to extract the emails. There are three ways to extract the emails. Method one I've already done. I'm going to select F2. If you notice in the formula bar, I use the mid function along with the find function to pull the email out of there. So if I auto fill down, there I go. The last step would be to copy and to paste the values. Because I don't need the formula, I need the actual email. So for extract the emails, that was one way to do it. That is not my preferred method in this example because <clears throat> a lot of people may not understand how to use the mid function and the find function. So the second way to extract the emails is to use Microsoft Excel's flash fill, which I believe is one of the greatest tools they've ever come up with. So I typed in cell B2 my name, and then in C2 I'm going to type in my address. I'm going to go to cell B3, go to the data tab, and do a flash fill. C3, flash fill. So there are all the emails right there. That is the second way to extract the emails, and that's a great way. That will only work, though, in Excel 2013 and Excel 2016 for Windows. It has not come to the Mac version yet. They are working on it. So that was the second way. The third way, this will work in any Excel version. Simply highlight these. If you notice, every email, if you look in A2, it's got an open angle bracket in front of the email. So let's go to the Data tab and use Text to Columns. Step 1, nothing to do, hit Next. Step 2, how is this information separated? By default, your screen will look like this. You're going to check Other. And I'm going to put in that open angle bracket, or the less than symbol. Notice it puts this line right here. If I take it back out, see the difference? And then I'm going to just click Finish. The only issue with this one is I still have the closed. So let's highlight them. Control H on the keyboard will pull up Find and Replace. Find what? The close. Replace it with, don't put anything in the replace with box, just hit replace all. Hit OK. Click close. So those are the three ways to extract the emails. The mid and find function, flash fill, and then text to columns. It really doesn't matter which one you do, because that took care of step one. But I believe text to columns may be the way to go if you don't have flash fill. The issue is now we're on step two. We've got to put a comma between the email addresses. And a friend of mine showed me this because I would have taken this into Microsoft Word and done find and replace and, and fix this. Her method is much easier because I, I stay in Excel. I'm going to do equals. Before I do this, let me get rid of that uh, hyperlink in here. You don't actually have to do this, but let me clear it. Here we go. So I'm in C2. C2 is going to be equals B2. C3 is going to be equals C2 and, which means concatenate. So I'm going to join to cell C2 a comma. And then I'm going to join cell B3. So now I've got Chris.Menard at ABC, comma, and then you simply autofill this all the way down. So that was a great trick. The last step would be to copy this 
and paste the values. So that is what you would throw into your LMS right up here. You can see that it worked. Now, there's actually two ways to do step number two. That was the first way, right here. Here's the second way. I'm using Microsoft Excel 2016 for Windows, and this is a new function. It only works in Excel 2016. I'm going to do it right here in cell C12. Equal symbol. It is called text join. The first argument is what do you want to separate your information by? It's a comma. By the way, if you end up telling me later, Chris, when we pull stuff into our other system or LMS, we need a semicolon. Well, that would be a semicolon then. Then another comma. Do you want to ignore any, any empty blank cells? I don't have any, but the answer is if I did, it would be okay. So I'm going to hit true. Just double click. Comma. So after true is a comma, then what is it I want to put a comma between? I'm going to highlight this range. Press enter. There is the text join function right up here. Once again, I would copy it and paste the values. And there is the same answer I had before. So there were three ways to extract the emails, and I showed you two ways to put a comma between them. Just so you know what I have coming up next week, let me pull up my website. The webinar on Microsoft Sway is still on. I've got, I think, room for another 20 people, and that's it. And that's at 2 p.m. Also, coming up next week, in Microsoft Word, I'm going to make a video on this. If you notice, I've got red squigglies, that spelling. I'm in Word 2016. I've got some grammatical errors, but they don't show up in green anymore. They're in double blue lines. The spell check is still in the same place. I'm not going to sit here and run through it, but Microsoft Word now has an editor. Let me show you what all it'll do. File, Options, Proofing, right in this section right here, click the word Settings, under Grammar and More, Microsoft Word will now go and check for all this information in here. So as an example, if you're writing something formal, I would turn on contradictions, so I can't use C-A-N apostrophe T. It would tell me, it would correct that. You can also check space between sentences. Don't check one space, two space. So there's a lot of new features in the editor in Microsoft Word, which is really great. So let me hit cancel and cancel, editor in Word. And one last item that's coming up next week, one of my clients, I just did some Excel training. We were doing filters, data. So I got the drop down arrows in the header row and client is called DT Spade. They do commercial real estate in Atlanta. And we were talking about filters. So if I only want to see, as an example, Art Vandelay and Chris, I hit OK. It's working. I got 232 records. And then if I only want to see Ford, still everything's correct. The issue is I want to see what I'm filtering, but also what am I not filtering by? So what we came up with is we're going to take our data and add slicers over here. So if I click on Art Vandelay and Chris, you can see who I'm not using over here. If I go and say I only want to see ABC dealership, and then I only want to see Ford, but I also want to see GM. Those slicers print. That's what's really cool. So I'll show you how to set this up how to do your data with slicers next week. Anyway, thank you for your time.